welcome back everybody to Contenders North America. It's Gym Guy Name, and I'm Fruit Basket Name. We're gonna get <laughs> into our second half of North America today, and we got some bangers. Ooh, I'm gonna start hitting my mic really soon if I get too excited. We have Revival versus Malice up to bat first. Let us know in the chat who you'll be cheering for. So we got our past champions versus the new kids on the block. It is indeed going to be an interesting matchup between our reigning champions. And like you said, the new kids on the block in terms of a branding, in terms of the team power. Let's bring up that Reviver roster because I really want to talk about what happened last month in case anybody missed it. Uh, well, I'll start off with LH Cloudy. We are in a rush meta. And LH Cloudy is who some people would say is the best Rhine in the world. And <laughs> he managed to lead Revival very effectively to a quite dominant showing in our first round here. And you guys have always been paying attention to Owl. Nobody here is ignoring the top echelon of competitive Overwatch. Teams like San Francisco Shock and Houston Outlaws are using the rush to great effect at the moment. So it might feel like Revival are not going to feel any pressure in this forthcoming series to really move away from that strategy until they are forced to do so. And Nas has been put to a substitute role, and now they're going to try and incorporate Tree in. And when I spoke to Icy before this match, they're feeling really good. And a lot of people are prepping them to go very far in this tournament, if not to win the, the whole thing. But then you guys saw the Reiner interview where American Tornado might be a rival they have to be careful of. But Tree is a new player to this roster, but a, a familiar name. Tree used to be on dark mode back in February, competed with Odyssey at Gauntlet, and, and has been around a couple teams. So a very solid player, but still... His playstyle has to mesh with the others, and the others have to mesh with him. So that's what we're looking for for Revival. But let's look at their opponent. It's Malice. This is a team that purchased the Saints spot, so not having to compete through trials. So we don't really have a litmus test or real results to show for these players as a team. Yeah, when it comes to the collective, all we can really talk about is... The previous experience we have with these players on teams such as most notably Cezano, who went on quite a roll towards the end of 2020, including some late tournament performances and a good performance at Gauntlet as well. Big boy over there, you may also know him as Akash, has got quite a story to him, Lemon. Oh yeah, he's been com competing in collegiate with Northwood University. For anyone who's not um, catching up with collegiate, that's the second best team behind Maryville. So also kind of where the Saints team kind of originated from. But Akash has gone away from being just that Hammond player who who's very present on the field. But he's expanding his hero pool. And especially for this meta where tanks are, there's so much being asked of them. Whether it's to learn Winston for double bubble, learn Reinhardt for the rush, learn Hammond just to give yourself more options on these high ground maps and i've been seeing a cash picking up more and more of these heroes with northwood and i'm excited to see what he's going to look like on a different team so he does have a couple of his old suzano friends here of uh, being foreshadow and Sai and angelic but there's still pieces from other teams here that they still have to work through yeah, and Akash having left Suzano to go and play in Australian contenders earlier this year, I believe with Ground Zero Esports, uh, we saw Suzano have a significant struggle in contenders trials. I think they may have placed fifth or sixth. They did not make the cutoff to make it into contenders. And for a lot of people, that was quite an upsetting result for this team. They lost out to teams like Wisp, who many thought that they would summarily stomp. Still, we're going to have to see if they're going to be able to survive in Contenders Prop. We're going to move into our map set. And coming up first is, of course, our control map. And it's going to be Nepal. I'm stoked for this. And this is first seed versus seventh seed, by the way. Revival are champions from last. And wondering if they're going to keep that crown. It starts with this first round, first to two. And Malice coming in as seventh seed. So that just means you usually have to give up that first map pick to the other. And this is first to two. So there's not really a lot of chances to, to experiment. So if we see Malice or Revival drop, I mean, I'm certain there's a lot of lessons to be learned in that lower bracket. But let's kick it off on Sanctum. Oh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned, Lemon, but there's a lot of fear to be experienced as well. Remember, we are in our second monthly tournament now. We're in the Contenders North America tournament for April. And that means that the bottom four teams, they aren't staying put. They're getting relegated to Contenders Trials where they'll have to play for their spots against some up-and-coming new talent that's been winning Open Division. So uh, good luck if you're currently competing in Open Division. Hopefully we might get to see some brand new faces 
coming up in our future tournaments. And if you don't want to miss any of those, you'll, of course, want to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified whenever we're going live. Oh, you guys can also use your hashtags on Twitter if you want to be featured on stream. And the winner of this match will face Obey Alliance versus Dark Mode in the next round in that semifinals. Well, let's take a look at these compositions. Now that no one is joking around anymore, these doors are opening. We're seeing the side Junkrat, my crazy cat on the hit scan, McCree versus the McCree rush of revival. And both teams opting into the Junkrat. Big boy thinks they can go toe to toe with LH Cloudy. You can see that Cloudy wants to already claim all of this space. However, they have to stop in track as Icy is trapped. Oh, swinging away though is Revival and man, and a little, little too close to the sun there. But I think that was still enough damage because look how the rest of Malice just fell as soon as Cloudy's impact was felt. So Malice will have to reset and looks like even their composition might be changing up. Stole a tactic from the Spartans of 300 right there, pushed them to the cliffs and then kicked them off the side. But Cloudy got so much cleave there, even if he did lose his life, he has a significant advantage when it comes to this Earth Shadow. So we expect that to come out as soon as possible for the element of surprise. See a quick ice block. You see Tree needs some backup and Icy can only matrix so much and you're still going to die to that swing from Big Boy to catch. So looks like Ballas will be traveling to that point. Only losing Psy is not a big deal. Maybe only giving up 20 something percent. Revival just dying on that objective one last time. Bit of a dive from Cry to catch some of these supports. Even Seekers getting pocketed from that back of Pascal. Point finally does get flipped over by Malice before uh, Revival decide to uh, put the fate in their own hands. Uh, Seeker fell off the map. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, it felt like with Pascal beside him that there was a chance for him to run this one off. But look at this. Cloudy is consistently getting punished right now for aggressive positioning. Got booped off there. Got killed first last time. Cloudy is consistently taking a huge amount of damage from Malice, and it feels like they've identified the linchpin of Revival, and they're looking to exploit that. Mm. For that wall, Psy brings it up. It splits Revival. They use the Ant Matrix to not only burn through that wall, but maybe the rest of Malice, who use the Sound Bear of Angelic to keep themselves involved, but now you don't have Sluggo. That's a lot of healing then gone, but Malice tried to hold on with some of the damage, and even the boops as Revival left to go towards the objective. Angelic found some environmentals. Looks like they are chasing some on Pillar's side, and Malice, meanwhile, still have control of the objective, unless Revival want to step up on it now. Let's see if they want to place themselves upon it. With Cloudy respawning and having access to that shield, it feels like they are going to try and get the flip right here. Cloudy didn't get much off that previous shadow, but they are going to try and engage now using the sound barrel, and they want to up the tempo, and they're going on a fat rotation. And this is scary to take a fight on Pillar's side when you just have these Lucios that can boop your whole team off, so... See that Revival don't want to stay there too much longer. Cloudy Shield's about to break, and he just goes on forward almost without the team, but left right above, giving him some sources of healing. But Cloudy was a little bit in too deep. Icy couldn't join him, and that's another fight for Malice, which is getting kind of dangerous now when you're at 80 plus percent. Crazy Cat showing off the accuracy right there. Yet another kill for Angelic. There are so many environmental kills right now, but I think the top fragger in this lobby is probably the fundamental force of gravity. Malice in a great defensive position. Revival are going to have to make a mad scramble from a point. It's likely going to be Icy's job to do so. We'll be able to tap in for that overtime, but they're going to have to touch it again. Oh, Deadeye right in their face. going to be a little hard. Icy has to be there to touch. Brings up the Matrix, I think, just in time. But now it's a duel against Seeker, who's left on his own. Goes towards Icy. They're at least a unit, but against all five or six of Malice that push into them. I'm surprised Icy and at least Seeker's not alive anymore. Shatter comes down from Big Boy. You got side Blizzard to slow down this pace of the game as Revival want to keep this alive one last time. But it seems impossible against the Fortress of a defense of Malice. And... This is our champions of March dropping the first round 100 to 26 to Malice. I'm not sure what's been happening, but Cloudy fell off the map there. I wonder if we do have a replay. I think this is from earlier when we got booped off by Angelic, who's been an absolute menace on this Lucio. Getting boop after boot. You can see another one in the kill feed there on Seeker, but how about an extra one? Just mwah, the cherry on top, the piece de resistance, and here we go. Let's go again. Angelic just grabbing one after another. At least four or five environmental kills on this round. And there we go. That's why Cloudy didn't give over credit to uh, Angelic for falling off there. Got a charge on the wall to make sure that the last movement ability used was his own and deny any of that alt charge over, but still... You know what you did, Angelic. <laughs> I just
just like the quick reactions from Revival 2. They saw Malice's uh, Junkrat and then just ran right at them, forced them off of that comm. So Malice trying something new with the Reaper Doomfist. But now they have to puncture inside of this point as Revival are taking shelter. They have the Symmetra turrets all over it, which is inherently is going to slow anything. And it's going to cause Malice to have to look at those turrets before they take the fight as they step on in. It's Sai with the first punch. He really wants to finish off Seeker, the biggest source of damage from Revival. Does drop. Malice not losing a single one up to this point. Almost a flawless first fight for Malice as they get the point cap first. Malice is exercising, exercising fantastic patience here, Lemon. They allowed for my crazy cat to not only get into a better position, but also be able to get all of their cooldowns back before they speed boost in, go for a cleave through multiple people, making sure that LH Kali's shield was essentially useless because you can't shield the swings, you can't shield the punch, and you can't turn around to allow that Reaper uh, some of your shield as well. Oh, big boy, you got a good swing. Getting ready for the shatter. If you can get to this high ground, wants to break it down, but gets at least Icy, who was away from the shield, and one shatter doesn't even get the pin onto the Diva, but at least finishes off the opposition. The other Reinhardt standing in his way, so Malice can even go for more kills, especially this baby Diva. So, Malice with two fights. And I love the aggression we're seeing from Malice right now. They have no respect for Revival. They have no fear for the Ancestor God, the power which runs through the veins of LH Cloudy Big Boy. Gives no respect to any of that. And now, respect needs to be given over to Crazy Cat. Has access to the Death Blossom. I'd love to see Sai and Crowley combine their ultimates here for a one-shot combo. Fight Ramen Revival on that point, playing off that May the Tree, leaves the Blizzard on the point, but Malice are using their own crawl. We died with Grav, and this is Malice still taking over the fight because of the Death Blossom. TP right before oh, the, the self-destruct. Oh my god, I can't believe he got away with that. <laughs> what so... fantastic timing. That's the first time I've seen that in a long time. I admit that Reaper has not been meta for a while, but what beautiful usage of the iframe. You, usually, you'd see that more with things like an Echo using the duplicate to get that momentary invincibility to avoid a huge source of incoming burst damage, but Crazy Cat got it done with the Shadow Step of the Reaper, and now they still have this Graviton Surge. They could win the opening round 100-0 here against our reigning champions, Lemon. At least the Krawi grab, you saved it for this moment. You stopped them from touching! And it's Malice taking the first map against Revival. And I can't stress how crazy this is. This is first to two. This is the first round. But everyone predated Revival to take this tournament easy clap. And this is not looking like that right now. Kind of pog. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Right, right now, I'm viewing Malice as my little pog champs. <laughs> Oh, they are playing incredibly well against the Cloudy Rhine. Like, this isn't just outwitting the Cloudy Rhine. They are going Reinhardt versus Reinhardt, and Big Boy doesn't care. Big Boy is earning the, uh, <laughs> the second helping from the dinner table. And Crazy Cat also doing incredibly well. We didn't know if he was going to be one of these primary substitute players who is constantly rotated in, or if it's just going to be a specialist for maybe a map or two or a hero or something. But right now, when it comes to this close quarters combat, like where Rush thrives, like in the meta, which Revival pushed themselves early on to be one of the progenitors of in our first tournament, we are seeing them bring it to Revival. And if Revival can wake up, we might have our first three map match of the day. And this is what I like about Malice's roster in particular, is that they give themselves options on that DPS role. So for Shadow and My Crazy Cat, both your hits and specialists and Psy kind of that flex. Of course, every hit scan has a wide hero pool, so maybe you could dip out of the hit scan role. But My Crazy Cat, when I talked to him before this match, I was like, all right, haven't, haven't casted you in a while, bud. What are you all about? And he was like, Reaper. And I was like, okay, <laughs> but like meta stuff. We were like, you know, what about Doom? What about May? What about Kree? He was like, Reaper. First let's map, bring up, and I was uh, like, <laughs> let's bring and uh, for Shadow, roster, Lemon. we've got ourselves a substitution. We were just uh, gushing about Crazy Cat, but he is going to be leaving the roster for this next map. We're going over to for Shadow here, who I think is more of a classic flick scan kind of player, and I think our next map is going to be Rialto. 
So there is a good chance that potentially for Shadow has been bought in here to play something like an Ash on uh, on the points where Ash can be incredibly oppressive. I'm thinking about defending second point here, Lemon, across that bridge. A damage boosted Ash can absolutely ruin someone's day. And obviously, the McCree will be one of the go-tos as well. Potentially, they're not foreseeing as much Reaper usage on this point. Yeah, because I, I was going to say that. As you have two hit scan people with pretty different hero pools, or my crazy cat might come in for these Reaper when you really want to add the rush to your composition. But then Foreshadow might be their more solid ranged hit scan. So your Ash, but mostly McCree, because he's become more meta because of his neutral versus uh, his neutral kit of having the flashbang. While as the Ash might have a more valuable ultimate in the Bob, but really depends on the preference of the said player, what they're most comfortable on, and what the map really depends on because you have more high grounds and you want to stay further back I sh ash might be a better pick i gotta point out a statistical difference even though crazy cat is going to be leaving the lobby crazy cat did 7.2k damage in that last map seeker only managed to do 3.7 while playing mostly on mccree and i think seeker was one of our primary standouts from the entirety of uh, of our first month he didn't even have a damage medal. He was the <laughs> second lowest damage on his team. Pascal was the lowest damage. Lep did more damage than both of them. Pascal and Seeker, they lost a huge amount of space to just how brazen I think Big Boy and Angelic were being and how much My Crazy Cat was forcing people to check random angles in case there's a Reaper hiding around there or in case Sai is just lurking. <laughs> and it was nice that Malice, even though they're a team of many puzzle, you know, former teammates, but puzzle pieces coming together for this tournament for the first time, that they were still able to cycle their ultimates quite well. Thinking of the last fight of Nepal Village, you had the Grav, the fight before that, you had Death Blossom Sound Barrier. So I'm already impressed of how well things are working out, especially when you have to go against the best team of the tournament in your first round. This is a tough challenge, but here we go, our next map. Best team of the tournament? Ask Malice. <laughs> oh, you mean us? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? I, I mean, coming out of nowhere to quite prolific victories is nothing new for Big Boy. Akash came out of nowhere on Sasano and did a lot more than we anticipated. We, uh, we, we had no real expectations for that roster. And they took down quite a few titans in their journey towards the top. Still, this has been Revival's map pick. They know that they can really drain a time bank here, especially on Rialto A with these spawn holds. It was either going to be here or Havana, in my opinion, where the spawn holds can just be so deliciously destructive to a time bank. Malice is going to make the right play here, though, and come out of the top area. And it's going to make it quite difficult for Sluggo to really have too much attention placed onto them. Wait, Big Boy tried to go for a charge, and it was right into his own May while placed by Sai. So, I mean, best case scenario, the defense take a fight, but it's really hard when the respawns from the attack are just that close. So far, not so good for Malice, who have already dropped Angelic, Sai, and now Big Boy. As Revival don't have the scouts, you have very limited heals with just the Lucio, so if they want to bait him on bridge side, Lep can get a, a great boop, but just wants to die on cart, take as much time away, which just ends up being 30 seconds. Yeah, 30 seconds is, uh, it's a little bit of time, Lemon. It's not nothing, but it's not what they were wanting. Revival were likely hoping for at least a fight there, but really speedy engage there from Malice gave them such an advantage. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. They created a backboard for Big Boy to charge into as well to make sure he didn't go too deep into their territory. Oh, the Maywall comes up right behind Malice. At least it breaks through with it. And Cloudy is 100 HP. Gets pinned down by Big Boy. Nothing that could save him. Once Revival is... Did it look like they hesitated? Like, the fact that Cloudy and Icy are deep and everyone wasn't ready to support that push. But Malice aren't going to go too far without their Reinhardt either. And Psy, 1 HP, gets around the corner. Foreshadow on the flank. The truth about that one is that Cloudy just didn't hit the counter pin. Dead Eye going to be used. It's going to catch up their counterpart, the Alpha McCree, at this point. Big Boy wants to get a big slam. Only puts one on the floor, but it's Pascal all the way into the back and left. is crushed against the wall, but Big Boy will stand alone. I'm afraid you've got to go sit under the stairs and think about what you've done. Yeah. 
I mean, pins like that, I, I like to do those in my quick play games, but not in officials, you know? You get the trade, but Big Boy's presence is going to be a lot more valuable to the entirety of the push compared to someone like Lab, just the Lucio in general. But looks like Malice, two minutes left, coming around the corner. Going around this nice degree angle, quite difficult, especially when Cloudy has high ground to play with here and an Earth Shatter as well. Big Boy knows he has to play a little bit more passively without access to his own Management of a shield here is going to be imperative for the attacking Reinhardt. Speaking of which, why not just charge over onto the high ground? You can meet Cloudy there. They haven't been able to stay there, though. Okay, the main wall behind Cloudy, the Blizzard on top. He's the only one frozen. Left uses the sounder to keep his tanks up as Icy didn't benefit from that ultimate. Loses the mech immediately, but Crowley eats the tree Blizzard. A big winning condition that Revival were depending on as Malice still had to dislodge his defense from the car because it hasn't been moving a whole lot. And there's only a minute 20 left, but at least a dub's a dub here. Yeah, those wind conditions were falling away with that Eaton Blizzard, and I think that Lep Sound Barrier both didn't impact LH Cloudy and Pascal. It might have actually got a Cloudy, but I'm pretty sure it didn't get Pascal. They can at least try and retake now with an early assault from the Amplification Matrix and the Fire Strike from Cloudy. I want to see Krawi really uh, prioritize eating that up. This is a good Amp Matrix from Sluggo. So, breaks down the shield from Revival as soon as possible, and he goes to contest, gets depleted, walled up from his team. Sai has been on his game today with those. It looks like there's no right now for either team. Now the Maze are freezing each other. Icy's getting involved, leaves the self-destruct. This is going to zone off Malice if they can even get away. I think even Sai got booped, and that's Icy with kill. a second kill. So, and that's not even the, the new mech damage either. That's just yeah, the that, soft that's, one. that's classic. That's classic mech pound right there and they got themselves a micro missiles kill they got themselves a self-destruct kill so much variety such a smorgasbord of pain that icy's been serving up here on this first point despite revival not getting much out of that first point hold now they're looking to hold it at the end with only six seconds remaining it's got to be a mad dash to get that contest lemon and from there you've just got to try and claw something away from trees blizzard yeah i can cry eat it again. I, when I was talking to him, he's like, man, I eat a lot of ultimates. This has to be the one to save your team. Side throws it down first. Tree in Tree gets frozen, I think, before his, his blizzard came out. I'm not even 100% sure, exactly but right, Malice. Lemon. Six versus five. More than enough. Tree thought he had to equalize it, but gets punished. The shatter comes down. I think it was blocked. And Malice hold on and we'll be getting point A. Exactly as you said it. Tree thought it was time to bring the sheer cold, but they found themselves being frozen first and their ultimate was cancelled. Such a sad fate for Snowball. And two, un two uh, minutes and 30 seconds will be added to the time bank of Malice to try and get some distance here. They've already claimed a high ground, which is good. You really want to try and do this in one with the momentum because you can get stuck on that bridge for so long, Lemon. Look at this quick rush from Revival, instantly demecking Cry, leaves the self-destruct on the high ground, and it doesn't get any kills, but it slows down Revival, who are just still on this high ground, as Malice and the rest get ready to sound their engage, but left thought of the same thing, Cloudy was frozen, and finished off by Sluggo, Malice 6 versus 5, and a tank advantage, just have to run over Tree, but looks like they're still dealing with the Diva of Icy from behind, and some people from the high ground, which Malice had their attention divided, which meant Seeker picked off their main healer, and Malice Malice missing Sluggo, this is not going to be the easiest fight for them to win. Iconic fan of a hammer kill from Sleeker, but Krawi hoping to try and bring it back. Three kills already, doing their best icy impression. It will be Sai who manages to bring it on back. Now, question is, how much distance can Malice get here? Angelic's got to collect for remnants of Malice, so they aren't in a great position to try and claim the high ground. And maybe Revive will be able to invest the speed boost to get that. But I feel like they're not going to have the space to do it. Could be an all-out battle on the car, and this could allow a very safe area for Slugger. The Deadeye was used from Seeker. The Shatter comes down from Big Boy, sacrifices his life, but it made room for the Blizzard of Psy, who frees up the entirety of the defense. But Tree with a response, this time not cancelled. Headshot on the cry, but couldn't get around the corner. Did not have Ice Block. 44 seconds left for Malice. If they give this up now, it's going to look rough. But looks like the only opponent they have left is Icy. No self-destruct, no second level. No second chances as Malice pretty flawless. I wouldn't say flawless, but a lot of momentum to bring themselves 
into point B is one last touch from Tree's Doomfist and Seeker rolling up on the McCree. A random shatter from Cloudy gets blocked by Big Boy and I'm thinking this is the end of Revival at least on this point but they're taking a lot of time away. Forced for usage of a soundbar is still Big Boy's down and LX Cloudy is the rock, the anchor, the absolute unimpenetrable bastion which stands in the path of this car. Every single kill on Malice takes so long to respawn right now that they have to put everything they have into this last fight as overtime strikes. What a freeze! So Cloudy's shield came down Sentinel. just in time. Yes, it's, it's just... I can't believe Revival have been stalling for 30 plus seconds and it doesn't seem like there's any end in sight. But Sai and Karawi down. Big Boy is low. Sluggo is back on the Moira. Coalescence almost on live with the man, the hammer. It just don't stop. But Angelic does distract him. Even picks him off as Icy just keeps this overtime wick burning and Malice were winning the fight for so long until they just weren't. I can't believe this fight lasted like two minutes what a choice from left to go for a three or maybe two man sound barrier to stay on that cart if they had not won that fight they would have been snowballed upon so hard on third but one centimeter is all that separated malice from a completion and that one centimeter is what revival grasped onto with both hands and they were never going to let it go they had two potential overtime defenses and on the second time, they finally managed to do it. Malice were worn down by attrition. And Revival, they got to cash in an ultimate bank that they've been building up for a while. Just Revival were so good at adjusting their pace, whether to play extremely slow like they did in that last fight. All they did was really play behind the cart the entire time. Whenever they lost one, they just stood their ground, which kept the cart contested. And Spawn's at that point are, are pretty equal between the two, maybe of favoring the defense a little more. So Revival just kept that thing contested for ages through the blizzards, through the shatters, through Cloudy being dead on repeat and really not his fault. That's just playing against me as a primary. It can be rough, but this is a different approach from Malice. They may decide to try and hide an early play here. The question is, when does Big Boy touch the car? And does Big Boy touch the car? Or will they leave it over to Krawi? The Diva can often be the designated... Oh, that fire strike early. Mm, that's uh, that's going to have given the game away, providing that attention is being paid. There we go. They're going to meet by the bridge now. And this could maybe leave the back line open to exactly that. Angelic's at it again. Oh, I'm getting the poor deja vu. <laughs> the fact that Seeker did not die, he was the one who was slightly at an off angle to get the flashbang on the big boy, and then the rest of Revival knew he was slightly out of position, and Malice noticed that right after Seeker, and then Tree, Cloudy, and everyone are trying to protect Seeker, who lived the longest. But I can't say the same about the rest of Revival, and a great boop you see on the replay from Angelic from the sky. Yeah, the A, the a in AC-130 stands for Angelic. We're gonna go across the bridge <laughs> again here. But Revival, they have scared away Malice slightly, who are going to have to seed away that deadly bridge space rather than try and exploit it a second time. They want this 90 degree angle. They've already got themselves their fight win. And now we've got to deal with Cloudy coming in from the high ground. Oh, Cloudy dropped right on the side, forces the ice block. Sai becomes target number one. Big boy is frozen. And Sluggo activates the amp matrix. Amplify the heals and all the damage while Revival were pushing into his May. But it's just not enough. Fresh Vival is back, baby. And they're on the cart. See exactly why they chose this map. It's such a great area for this rush composition. And how much space does Cloudy want to claim is the question. This is a really good save here as well from Seeker. Really good focus fire to make sure that Big Boy not only would not be able to deliver that damage, but deny that ult charge. Oh. He's looking for the May, gets the final swing onto Sai, and you take those solo shatters onto May because they could stall your card for so long with the ice block and with the wall and everything. And despite losing Sai, Big Boy, okay, that flashbang got a little bit sketchy there, but they bring him back to full health, and a sounder is what I'm looking at for their next fight. Big Boy, the advantage on the slam right now. They need to do a lot of damage to Cloudy's shield, force him to continually rotate it, force him to get nervous about where Big Boy may decide to come from, but still, it's a five versus six in favor of Revival as they move forward. Oh, the shatter from downtown and Zim. Oh, and the pin into Icy's own wall while you have two blizzards. You got a sound bear, you got a self-destruct, oh you have Icy on the kill feed. A triple kill taking out the Malice supports. No healing left for them, and that means a point A cap for Revival. And only a minute and a half faster than Malice, though. 
Ah, you used your immortality field to survive Blizzard, did you? Don't mind if I just stick this one in the back. Really good usage here. I think that maybe the uh, the ice pod could have blocked that shadow, but I think the ice wall was there as well. Basically, Big Boy was uh, not having a great alliance with their May at that moment. The freeze was actually cleansed just in time for maybe some defensive play. Oh, the Deadeye gets blocked by the main wall. Good play from Tree, trying to freeze up Big Boy. Gets the Immortality immediately from Sluggo. Tries to keep his team healed up. Malice trying to give up this high ground as Cloudy is getting pinned down. Okay. He's a little just deep. Just pin Revival. from the sky. Sometimes Revival Big Boy just now. descends from where you have no idea. Playing around the high ground again, but without Cloudy. They want to stick close to the walls here. Try not to take any peaks that are a little bit too aggressive because it would allow them to be quite easily farmed by for shadow. Still, this area can be claimed rather easily using the Deadeye. Yeah, if they can zone them off the staircase, that Deadeye's going to have a lot more value. He just steps up in the immortality, I think, but it gets mostly denied from Crawley as they kind of got walled into staircase, not really dropping right away. Malice a little stubborn, but they're back on the cart. Shatter play from Big Boy. Force Tree into the self-destruct of Crawley. This is putting a lot of pain into Revival. Do not have a lot of heals left with just left as Malice just have to play things slow and eventually Revival will reset. This main tank duel is capturing all of my attention, Lemon. Big Boy versus Cloudy is such a treat already. Big Boy's actually leading in damage right now by a factor of about 10, maybe 15%. But they have a, quite a few less deaths as well. So maybe Sluggo and Angelica are putting a little bit more into trying to peel for Big Boy compared to how maybe Revival are putting stuff into Seeker. What? He held that dead eye for so long, even with the May wall in his face and everything. And Revival thought, okay, if the, now that we've May, I don't know why Revival engaged when they use May wall too. They thought I mean, they could sneak around it, but they just walked into the hands of Malice. Let's see how Angelic wants to use this sound barrier here, Lemon. It's the only ultimate that's immediately available for Malice. Of course, they will soon have the amplification matrix and the Earth Shatter, but. This is going to be incredibly important when... Oh my goodness, they picked off Tree. Oh and no, they're like, trying uh -oh. to do a lot more. They're trying to put that, that train in reverse and good Matrix on that Deadeye too. Seeker getting nothing out of that. And even the Matrix scared off Revival by a ton. And I've been loving these Maywalls from Sai. This is making Cloudy just not look like Cloudy today. <laughs> Remember how Revival took the first point here. They used the Blizzard. There was an overlay of support utility. Both the Immortality Field and the Sound Barrier was used to answer it, and then Icy followed up afterwards. We may need to see something very similar here from Revival, as Malice have once again similar resources to deal with the Ultimates. The Tale of Two Shatters. Revival getting a bit of space, but Malice take over this high ground. This is where the flashbangs could be a little bit critical. Cloudy has to be careful with his shield. Cloudy almost gets walled off by his own cry. It's another gra or uh, uh, just another ultimate with the blizzard from Tree. Denied a second time. Self-destruct. Shatter from Big Boy. Gets three down from Malice. The box of victory in the sights of Revival to even up the series. And Cloudy, now that he's unleashed, will not be stopped. Cloudy is done with games. There's only a couple of meters remaining. Can we even touch the card? The answer will, of course, be no. And Revival on their map pick will even up our series. And for the first time in the Contenders Tournament for April, we will have a three-map series. Ooh, that was a dance. And we at least we got a very clear litmus test uh, with having a mirror composition of who really was the, the better team. And despite Malice coming in as like the kind of one of the last seeds, a team that bought their spot, you don't really know, you know, results wise what they're made out of taking the map one and making it pretty close at the end. I mean, it was just revival that just knew how to play that map inside out. But like I had already said before, just knowing how to play rush, when to play it fast and when to play it slow based on your numbers and based on what the winning condition is, holding Carter or winning the fight. Yeah, it feels like revival will have a instinctual knowledge, a sixth sense for how to tempo themselves in these rush compositions, quite similar to how uh, players of old would have interacted with goats, knowing what tempo is most likely to succeed for you, given the resources that you have, what's been expended, and what the enemy has available. But this does mean that Malice are going to be able to pick our third and final map. Ooh, we've had some 2-0 Overwatch 
so much today, even an EU, even an A, but after this break, you guys will find out the conclusion of the series. Our series is tied 1-1 apiece. We're going to be finding out who's going on to the next round or who's going to have to make a tough journey through the lower bracket. It's Revival Art Pass Champions versus the newcomers of Malice who are putting on quite a good series today. Yeah, and that lower bracket brings you one step closer to relegation as well. I mean, the stakes are real. There's no more safety. Half of our teams will be going down to trials. Our bottom four will have to re-qualify during our contenders break but yes we've got ourselves a best of three in its entirety let's have a look at where we're going to be going to next chosen by malice Ooh, drum roll it's eichenwald so what are you thinking like day? because out of all the hybrids i feel like a lot of people like king's row and just every others but eichenwald has a kind of unique property where there's a lot more high grounds a lot more areas where you can get environmental kills and stuff like that uh what, what do you think the plan is uh, Eichenwald second is a very unique point. Uh, it has what I call a sheer high ground in that it can be incredibly difficult to access even if you do have vertical mobility, especially the top rampart of the pre-castle just after the portcullis. If you're up there, sometimes a Winston can't even get a good leap onto it if they're not coming from an already pre-elevated position. And part of me thinks that if Foreshadow is remaining in, which he is going to be for Malice, then maybe they want to set up an Ash on there. We haven't seen a huge amount of uh, diversification <laughs> from the Ryan compositions from either of these teams yet, but our sample size has been rather small. 
So it might be that after being forced into that rush uh, sort of mirror on Rialto, where it's basically mandated, that potentially they're looking to get a little bit more value out of some high grounds by playing things like a Winston, like an Ash, maybe a little bit of dive here and there, double bubble potentially, like we saw earlier from some of our other North American teams. Yeah, for the high grounds around that first point objective that you have to cap, there isn't, it's not too hard to reach where you need a baller, Winston, but I could see that for the castle side of things once they get beyond that point. And Akash was just known so well for his handman back on the Susano days and just Winston and Dive in general. But we've been seeing now with Northwood how he's been experimenting with new things. And I think Cry would fit perfectly with Akash, where Cry can have the Sigma if they need to play at some kind of off angle setup. Cry can fill that role. And I've just impressed that Malice, despite not having the longest of resumes, you know, compared to the people uh, on uh, Revival who've been around for ages, Malice are keeping up and coming up with their own ways of executing these maps. Yeah, like like you said, Revival's been around so long. LX Cloudy has so many years of experience that he could basically get an entry-level job in today's job market. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm bitter or anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be Revival who are going to attack first. Oh, thanks, Dan. You know what? Oh, thanks, I love Dan. you, too. That's nice of you, Dan. Also, nice surname. Also, the number one doctor, but uh, I can't go further into that. <laughs> what? I have no idea what you're talking about. But don't, don't worry. That, that, one, that one's for British people. God, uh, you know I'm not British like they, but... Malice, they are back to their same old stuff, the rush, the Maykri even. And this is perfectly normal. You have that main archway or kind of bridge that Revival have to cross into. And that's going to be the spot where those May walls are going to come up. And I've been really impressed by Side, how he's be been able to isolate Cloudy and almost make him look like a fool because he's there by himself and Revival can't break the wall fast enough. Yeah. Cloudy has found himself isolated quite a few times. Malice definitely doing their best to try and take advantage of Cloudy's, let's say, Berserker style <laughs> with the Rhino. He's very <laughs> aggressive. He loves a good W and M1 already on top of Malice right now. Yeah, you can tell that uh, good big boy has the shift key bound for sure. And Seeger getting chased down by Crawl. That's such an important role of D.Va to make sure those off angles are not found. But what is found is Revival and a first tick. Despite this fight not going super hot when you don't have tanks. Malice also, I think it's probably 4v4, 4v3, something like that, favoring Revival. Who are now starting to gather that second tick. Malice don't have a lot of people around. Maybe respawns are kind of far. And no one will be able to touch that card. Yeah, it looks like everyone's going to have to flee away, but Icy is going to uh, lose themselves. They might have even been standing still to allow for Scythe to get a headshot so they didn't have to reset too quickly to try and get that mech back. It will be granted on the respawn, and a pause Ew. will be granted as well. Uh, of course, we're, uh, <laughs> there's, there's likely some issue somewhere. It's okay. I'll have time to get it fixed. But I'm not sure what happened to Sluggo in that fight particularly. Because it seemed like they're alive for the majority of it. But we uh, didn't really see a huge amount of fuels come through. I think For Shadow is the one having a technical issue right now. It is worth noting that For Shadow is a, I believe, Korean import. So there might be some ping issues there. Um, maybe maybe some kind of internet issues. I doubt it. The Korean uh, inf internet infrastructure <laughs> is actually fantastic. I'm incredibly jealous. Probably better than Canada's, that's for sure. My Canadians will know what I'm talking about. Uh, also, that Cry, he was the one who got the first pick onto Seeger. So it was Malice that started off with the advantage. And then I think as Revival started rushing around, they split off Malice. So that's what's... It, there's an execution to attacking with Rush, and then there's also defending against Rush that you have to learn. And splitting off into all the corners of the earth is a way how you get isolated and ran down on, like Revival just did to Malice, and getting the point that quickly is a little, a little spooky. Doesn't like uh, Foreshadow has rejoined the lobby. We'll, of course, be back in spawns. They have to re-choose their character. So we're likely going to see a hard disengage here from Malice as they do return their primary DPS to the fold. Revival now will be able to claim a lot of this space for free. But it seems like Malice aren't going to go back too far. They trust Malice to make the journey themselves and maybe even meet them up on high ground. Where Ice is going to be doing a quick scout to see which position Malice wants to try and take advantage of. 
Well, they do draw, but Sluggo has the Matrix on the high ground, so we'll be starting to shred that shield of Cloudy, who brings the Shatter down from the corner side while Big Boy was spinning in a circle. Immortality was there, and it actually lived for quite a while, but it's still revival that lasts way more on their engagement, trying to back up Cloudy. So, it's Malice that'll keep the card anchored. Mouse doing a great job there of presenting multiple threats as well by ensuring that Big Boy and Krawi were smacking straight into the midst of Ra uh, Vite Ramen Revival while Sluggo and Foreshadow were up top behind an amplification matrix. So as people tried to kite away from Big Boy and Krawi, they were moving into those pre-trained crosshairs. So Blizzard being thrown from Psy on this cart. Cloudy is the first to be frozen. Seeker also around the corner, finished off by Krawi. And that's Revival missing too much to keep going. Four and a half minutes though, but this is almost a tougher choke point to get through if you keep getting stopped over and over again. This is a very aggressive hold though from Malice. But no longer wants to take advantage of those high grounds. So I want to get a little bit more aggressive now and deny any space away from Bite Rum Revival. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> Shatter from <laughs> now with sound barriers being invested in the spawn rooms of revival. You got a blizzard that made its presence known. You got a, a self destruct. I think that was a Did little that freeze bit of an over investment. It just seemed like a lot. Did this that was freeze cloudy extra. just in time to stop him from shielding that and therefore shielding Seeker? If so, that was. That was either incredibly unlucky or incredibly clutch. And I choose to believe that Sai fully intended for that to be what was happening. This is a very tough spawn now, Lemon. Two very tight doorways from which to go out of and not a huge amount of space to claim. Okay, at least walling off the building that they could have ran into. Cloudy oh, with a shatter. He's going to take care of himself after that. Actually, Crowley gets credit for it. Malice have not lost anyone. Self destruct from Ice. He's not going to find any kills either. Revival kind of stuck in their spawn without their leader of Cloudy to guide them through. But they actually split off and have been pushing the card. This is going to draw Malice all the way back and away from those spawn room doors. But you see how Revival supports are not getting that space they would like. Big boy left with 69 health, but he's feeling far from nice right now. Needs some desperate healing attention from the supports. And Sai is going to be exactly the same, but will be falling down. It seems like Revival off the back of attrition here. Have managed to get not only a little bit of cart push, but also premier positioning. Oh, okay. They're using the dead eye as well. That has forced out the immortality field, and maybe that was used a little bit callously here by Sluggo. However, Malice is still going to have access to the high ground, which is going to be imperative. But they are split at the moment. It's a bit of a defensive mess, Lemon. Deadeye from Foreshadow, left side, wall comes down. Oh, they boop Cloudy, opens up the shot of her big boy. Okay, shield comes up though, shield's up, baby. Big boy needs to be healed up a little bit before we go a little bit crazy in the paint. But Revival have had so much of their time taken away. And now that this fight has to happen on bridge side, this is where these Lucios are going to come alive. Oh man, that was an absolutely beautiful setup. You might think, oh, it's... It's a lucky boop. It's a bridge. It happens all the time. But Sai specifically set up the wall on the right-hand side so that they knew that Cloudy would try and disengage to his right-hand side as well and then maybe try and cover his retreat. Look at this. It's stuck so that he has to go towards that edge to try and disengage. I mean, it's easy pickings for Angelic, who's been on top of everything on this Lucio. Been so effective as an environmental hazard this entire series. Yeah, this is some of the best Overwatch I've seen Angelic play. But we'll see, they're actually just pushing into Revival, who are putting their own backs against the wall. They don't have a shutter, but they did try to create his third blizzard of the series. He is full. Charity has been closed. Okay, stop it. Let, let Tree play the game, please. But Revival, self-destruct, and more ultimates having to come out as Plan B, Plan B. Plan C, Plan D are falling through. Revival back on the cart, pushing it through. Foreshadow, uh, not picked off by IC. Without IC, there could be a recontest in the hands of Malice, but they have to touch. The shadow looking maybe for a dead eye on the right hand side here still is going to be suppressed by an enemy dead eye and well with the mains oh okay they managed to slam down tree but the counter slam from cloudy just before getting frozen will keep them alive for now size taken down let that slugo is still here and they have themselves an immortality field pascal somehow fallen off the map the main healer a victim of gravity here you just about need to get rid of slugo and you will manage to do so but attrition is not on their side lemon and when the dust clears Malice remaining control. The snakes in the grass have the deadliest venom. Oh, 
30 seconds remaining. Revival, they had a speed run at the point objective. Got stopped, what, twice, three times at the first underpass choke and now have to travel through all of this again. So Castleside has to be the play. You don't want to cross bridge, especially against Angelic. We've learned that lesson the hard way, but starting with the high ground first, making sure there's no McCrees there for a Deadeye as Revival get ready to brawl. They walk into the Deadeye up for Shadow Matrix up by Icy, but both tanks have been deleted by Angelic, finished off by Foreshadow. There's no shields, but only damage that remains from Revival, and they cannot have any space, especially when their healers are getting flanked by a McCree. Good peel from Lab keeps a Pascal still living, but we don't have any DPS to heal. It's just not going to get the job done. Revival will not be touching point B. Do we have a replay of that engage from Revival? I think that they actually booped Icy in midair off the side of the map, the exact same place that they got Cloudy before. Have a look at this. Cloudy has to make the charge past this wall and they get Icy as they're about to run out of boosters. Angelic, who is this man? He makes Lucio look fun. <laughs> like, I love playing Lucio on, on this bridge phase. Other than that, I'm silver, but Angelic, he's got a heart of gold after that. I'm sure he's having a blast. And the fact that Revival had so much time, the almost the max amount of time possible for point B, and they just got stopped time and time again. Malice are super solid at rush. Angelic is bronze damage right now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no surprise. <laughs> he's doing a lot. There's a full stat card. Thank you very much, Jay. 24 and 2. Getting that getting that 12 to 1 KD. Not bad for a Lucio. And of course, almost being able to outdo their damage with the healing as well. Angelic for me is an absolute star right now. And maybe the difference maker. And it's so iconic as well because Lep was probably the most underrated player coming into our first tournament of 2021. Like everyone knew Cloudy's name. Everyone knew Icy. Lep and Pascal, mostly unknown, but did so well on the Lucio bat, but now Angelic and Sluggo, they're, they're, they're holding their own and Angelic is getting wins. Oh yeah, Sluggo took body shot, got him kind of low, but keep an eye on how this first May wall is going to come up and how many people are going to be caught. So still a crack in there, Tree not getting the isolation, Malice going for a block with their May wall to stop Revival from following up. Seeker has been found on an off angle by Crawley and that's a six versus five for the offense. Traveling through the left side, swinging on that May. They got a little too close looking for the freeze as Cloudy respecting that space. Everyone to the left side, but Revival may be even split from each other as Cloudy is getting ran down and there's no one to protect him. Half of the other side of Revival are contesting the point. Malice should be in a good spot to keep this going, but now the supports were exposed, and this is not looking so certain anymore for Malice. Well, somehow Pascal has got out the Amplification Matrix. Double damage for everyone who's shooting on through it, and Big Boy has managed to rejoin the fray, only to be beaten on down again. Baby Diva versus Baby Diva goes the way of Krawi, but guess what? Cloudy's back with a hammer, turning him into expensive Korean jam, and... By the skin of their teeth, Revival will remain in this fight, but Malice were so keen to chase kills that they had no one on the point. And despite having such a early fight advantage, they don't walk away with a tick here. And they've lost themselves 90 seconds, and they're going to be going into another blizzard from Tree. So, Krabi, it's time to do what you do best again. Oh my god, and Malice just... Uh, Revival snuck up on Malice as they walk into the shatter of Big Boy, but they're all frozen up by Tree's Blizzard, who got a ton of value. That was right in the faces of Malice. And that was what kind of paid off in Revival's close hold there. <laughs> oh, Cloudy. Time to swing perfectly. Plugger may send themselves to the sky, but guess what? Icy is ready to meet you right there. And now Revival have built up a trusty ultimate bank to try and keep a hold of this point. They're going to have five ultimates before this next fight engages. And I think that Malice, with two minutes left here, Lemon, considering how far they need to take the cart, I would take an economy round here. You need to get two or three ultimates out of Revival. Don't use anything. See if they'll listen to Coach Leg Day. Starts with the Dead Eye first from oh, Foreshadow. Exactly. Just zones them back off towards the point. They started using stuff. Leg Day is Angie. Sound Barrier engaged from Revival. Couldn't save Tree. Dead Eye from Seeker. The Shatter from Cloudy. Revival using everything and more. 
Seeker needs to be saved. Frozen up by the Blizzard of Psy. Cry gets Cloudy. Two down for the defense of Revival. And Malice can still hold on to their sound barrier. They even have to use that. So maybe they didn't anger you too much like that. <laughs> Man, it's a good job. But I'm not a professional analyst for Overwatch, Lemon. <laughs> Revival used every single ult they had. They used five ultimates in that fight and got value out of none of them. I thought that maybe if they were going to extract value from each one of them, that Malice would have no chance of winning that fight. But they just whiffed every single opportunity that they had. And Tree had no idea where that Dalio was coming from in what was essentially a first engage from Malice. I don't know where Tree's sensory awareness is, but it ain't present. Oh, Tree trying to get out. He's a little far forward with that ice block. Gets back towards the front line. Leaves Cloudy out. And that means the Shadow's going to get a ton of value. We even get the mech out of Icy. And uh, Pascal didn't get a high enough jump, so he's going to be finished off too. But at least you're dying with the team. Respawns all together. Malice move forward. Three minutes to play with and making it three report colors. This is very bad news for Revival. They wanted that sheer high ground to try and get their engagements off of to give a safe staging area for Seeker and Pascal to be able to rain down damage with impunity. But now they not only have to battle for the high ground, but they have to battle on the car afterwards. If they invest too much to try and get this, it could be curtain. So remember, it's Malice on the attack, and now they're in the defensive spot. Revival with the Shatter gets both the Malice down, and no sound error, and no immortality in time. Sluggo was the first pick. Seeker's got three, and that's Revival back in the driver's seat. And thank God, because it was looking a little scary there. Two minutes still for Malice. It was looking very scary for our reigning champions, but now they can use this high ground again. This was a fight they desperately needed to win, and they did it with minimal investment. Just a big slam from Cloudy was more than enough. And Malice, they've only got themselves two ultimates to play with here, but that's a good wall. It does at least block off a huge amount of the incoming poke. Lep could have looked for a cheeky boop there, but fell too low and didn't want to risk their life. Revival on that high ground using the Ant Matrix, but Malice thought of the same thing, but it's Malice a little less healthy, especially when Revival used a sound barrier when they were dropping and a blizzard right on top, and they actually left tries to boop people. Oh, it was uh, the other self-destruct from Cry, but Icy still has his, and I don't think it's the time to use it when you're the last one left, so... Malice taking this fight, get ever so closer to that final box of victory. We're expecting this one to be a nail by Salem, and it might just come down to one or two fights. Hi. Revival, they're going to be able to engage. They have themselves a bomb, so Icy has additional survival. Likely will be the one who has to stay on cart and use that to remake afterwards. Cloudy's going to have trouble getting through this ice wall. They need to burrow through it tough, but they are going to slam down Seeker. That's a great start. Yeah, the headshot, they go right after Pascal. Not a lot of healing left for this defense of Revival, who were the champions. And Malice, so close to that box of victory, to the series point of this first to two and first round of our April tournament. Revival will not go down without clawing through this team one last time. As it's three or four left from the defense of Revival, those close respawns helped them out a lot because they lost Pascal and they had lost Seeker so early, but were able to play slow enough to take back the fight. Once again, it's for Lucios who are the heroes. Let booping Sluggo off that bridge, getting rid of the main heal. Seeker's going to have access to high ground. That's a beautiful place to put up a parasol, put down a picnic blanket or something, and then get ready to use your dead eye. But they're going to give up the high ground here. They want to play it on car. The dead eye in motion. Going to eat up a lot of that matrix from Cry. He's getting close at self-destruct. He's only a few percent away, and that's going to buy a lot of space for this offense of Malice, who have lost both DPS to Seeker just rolling up uncontested just like that. The clean fight win from Revival, not losing a single one. When it looked like they were going to lose this, it looked like this was in the hands of Malice in the previous fight, but Revival drained this, and they will move on to the next round. Revival just coming back to the old reliable, going to the straight mirror match when it comes to the rush. Cloudy going huge. I've got to admit that the big slam that we saw on their, I think maybe the third fight on second, to be able to win a fight off just one big slam saved the economy for Revival and allowed them to not have to use things like the self-destruct, which was imperative later, to be able to contest that cart for a little while longer. Huge individual plays as well. Let 
came not only to equal the efficacy of Angelic at the end of that map as well, but also outdo them by getting an opening pick onto Baptiste when it was at its most needed. And they managed to exploit the positioning of both Foreshadow and Psy to make sure that that last attack was going to be entirely toothless. Well, we were talking about the start, about how Tree was going to get incorporated, but I felt like this was a bit of a secret show at the end. Like, you saw how much of an impact uh, he was he was having in the series that you had to send Cry to just constantly babysit him, matrix him, and catch him on these off angles. And when Seeker is left alone, he rolls up and just kills everything. He had such a huge role in those final fights, but... That might be the end of our series, but not the end of the show, of course. After this break, we will have an interview with Cloudy to get his thoughts on the match. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back from the break, everybody. We have a special post-game interview with Cloudy Main Tank Extraordinaire from Revival, who took a dub 2-1 to one against Malice, but it may be a bit of a stressful dub. Uh, Cloudy, you sounded uh, pretty stressed when you joined the call. What, what's going through your head right now? Uh, I mean, we, we had some failures, a lot of them, but as long as we win. The only thing that came out of my mouth when we won was a very aggressive Finnish swear words. So <laughs> that's how you know I was a rough one. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, was that was that relief for having won, or was it, were you yeah. finally playing as you expected? Oh, okay, production have done you dirty. The first highlight is you being grouped off by Angelic <laughs> Underfall. No shot. No oh, shot. No man. shot. Yep, welcome to the interview. What, what I want to ask you about first <laughs> is, uh, what's it been like trying to relearn Rush with a new May? I mean, it, it's like not a lot of little learning, you know. Tree is a smart little kid, so he like knows what he's doing most of the time. So. It's like easy to put in one player and like five other people like know the basics of stuff, you know. Like <laughs> easy to implement a new guy. Oh yeah, Icy was telling me how your DPS are what, 13 and 16 years old and how yeah. you became kind of... Uh, congrats on becoming a father, uh, <laughs> uh, I guess so, I guess so. Our DPS are very young, yeah, start this very quick. Are you used to being like the emotional core of a team? Like obviously you've had a long... Uh, history of competing on teams like Giganti, but there there were like other people like Zuppe who would occasionally be like incredibly veteran competitors. Is it new for you? Or are you quite comfortable with sort of like the the sort of the older brother position as Korean teams would see it? Well, it's it's a new position for me. When I played two years in all, I never was like the veteran presence or whatever. And now I'm like the old guy who was in Orat's League, like the fucking. Sorry, uh, the old, the old, old, old Finnish Reinhardt player. So you know, it's like new position, but I'm like fine with it. So, you know. so, what were your thoughts of Malice before, like coming into this series? Uh, because you know they bought their spot. No one had seen them play as a team. Were you thinking this was going to be easy, or do you take you know every match really, really seriously? I mean, you never are, you never underestimate the opponent. Like you always need the player very hardest. Like you don't underestimate anyone. Enemy was pretty good, but we kind of did a little bit, of, a lot of, not even a little bit, a lot of trolling, a lot of trolling. <laughs> you a do a lot of trolling. A lot of <laughs> what was your? Uh, has has anything changed in terms of a scrum environment you guys have, or the overall team environment being defending champions now instead of? Uh, what was before quite a meager performance from Revival? Yeah, I mean, it changed. Like, we have way better scrims. Like, we scrimmed all Rats League teams and stuff, and we've been doing really well. Uh, that's the only thing that changed. And we, like, try our very hardest every scrims. It's like the only change, I guess. So, with <laughs> Tree. So with Tree coming in and being super new, and you having to kind of become that father figure, just someone that everyone's looking up to, how were you able to calm his nerves and kind of make the team feel better about some of the mistakes that, that were happening in the series? No, I just need to keep saying, like, you know, we can win, we are a very good team. Just don't panic, don't do crazy stuff, and, you know, just get in there and roll opponents. So we kind of did not do the rolling part, we kind of just survived. It was just uh, <laughs> like the last defense was just all about surviving and we survived. That's what matters. What I want to ask about is maybe some future speculation we might not be able to talk about. But in Overwatch League, we have seen quite a few rush teams like the Houston Outlaws opt into using the Sigma a little bit more. And we know that IC is an incredibly good Sigma. Can we expect to see any of that from you guys? Or are you just so well drilled on this Diva Reinhardt that it wouldn't really make sense to make that adjustment? You never know what we're gonna play. We're a highly flexible team of all compositions. You never know what we'll pull out. Yeah, like Day. He is leak free. How dare you try? <laughs> real, real, <laughs> real. One minus a thousand is enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, how about you leak your preds for Obey Alliance versus Dark Mode coming up? Those are your op opponents. A lot of people preding Obey and Dark Mode being in that top four along with you guys. But who do you think is gonna come out on top in that match? Dark Mode is gonna do Chiro probably. Oh, wow. Ooh. Wow. That is quite the bold. Do you have any expansion on that or? Uh, I'm just making, that a, I'm making a very bold uh, prediction. Very okay. Bold. We, 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 we love bold and brazen. And that's also a good way yeah. to describe your Reinhardt style as well. I suppose <laughs> while we have you and we've got a couple more replays with a lot of uh, people in the chat likely uh, grinding away in comp right now. Is there any advice you could give them on how to be a good Reinhardt in this meta? Well, my number one advice for anyone is press more mouse one and W. If you press ass, you lose. Just go. Attack. You're a Reinhardt guy. You don't have long range weaponry. Just go. 
All right, don't pretend what? Ryan Hart has a sniper rifle. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for the interview, Claudia, and uh, good luck in your next match. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the man who channels the power of the Finnish ancestor gods of Fraggy and other Rhines into the everyday, and who some people would say is the best Reinhardt in the world, LH Cloudy. Straight off a victory that was, well, hard earned, and in some cases it seems quite a stressful experience, but they will make their way deeper into our winner's bracket, and Malice will unfortunately be dropping to a loser's and be in the danger zone of potential relegation to contenders trial. Yeah, you never expect the first and the seventh seed to have that close of a match when we've had two Overwatch all day. That's kind of how, how the first round goes. Everyone's getting feelings for each other, but Obey Alliance in dark mode are the final match of the day coming up to round out our first rounds. The winner of this match will go up against Revival in the next round. The loser going up against Malice. So you won't want to miss it. Keep your butts in your seats.